Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Uh, welcome to our new set here at Microchip. Uh, my name is Jan Lefau. I'm managing the machine learning solutions for MCU and NPUs. And we have an exciting project, you know, subject today is the uh, machine learning and how we can help you. So for that, I have two guests with me. Uh, Alex, about what, 10, 20 feet away from me. <laughs> Yeah, um, good to be here. My name is Alex Jagger. I'm an applications engineer here at Microchip Technology. I'm excited to give you a demo of our machine learning solutions that we have with Cartesian. And online uh, with Skype, through Skype, we have Ryan from our design partner, Cartesian. Yeah, hi there, Jan. Hi, everyone. So uh, I'm Ryan Plack, uh, Vice President of Sales with uh, Cartesian. Uh, we're a software company based out of France, uh, focused on bringing machine learning to the edge um, uh, for MCU power, uh, powered objects. And uh, really the, the capabilities that, that uh, Cartesium offers is uh, learning, understanding, and analyzing data uh, directly uh, into microcontrollers. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, before we jump into you know, that subject, uh, back to Wayne in the booth. Hey there, everyone. It's uh, actually my first time back here in probably a couple of months, so I'm kind of excited to be back in the chair. Uh, everyone, it's Jan's uh, first time hosting yeah, thank you. a live stream here with us, so this is going to be pretty fun. Um, Jan and I go way back, 14 years or so. Um, it's good to see all three of you uh, in, in the flesh and in the, uh, in, in the ether, I guess. Um, I'm going to talk to you about a couple of things. So, you know, we're, gonna, we're talking about machine learning today, and... We're actually going to be doing, uh, you know, I'm gonna, we're going to be providing samples for people. Um, we, I think we have a few of these little babies. Um, they're basically the SAM D21 Machine Learning Evaluation Kit. Now, say that three times fast, and uh, uh, you, you may actually, you know, like get an extra something out of me for that one. But um, basically, Alex is going to be showing you how to use this with the Cartesium solution <coughs> later. So... Uh, I'm going to drop a link in the chat. This is how we're going to do it. Uh, normally, we would kind of select, you know, uh, the a, a, a person who who's asked a question, but uh, in order to um, in order to make sure we give every everyone a nice fair shot, what we're going to do is I'm going to drop a link in this uh, link in the chat for survey. <coughs> um, you're going to have basically the entire time to fill out that survey, um, and what we're what we're going to do. Um, over probably we'll close it out later on today, tonight, and uh, do a random. Uh, we'll, we'll do a random drawing, and four of you will be able to receive a free sample <laughs> of this board. So, ask questions. Make sure I have all my notes. It's been a while. Um, if you do not get your question answered or asked online, uh, you can actually send it to livestream at microchip.com. Don't forget to like share and subscribe uh, we're also on uh, YouTube LinkedIn Facebook so hello to my audience is out there and I've taken too much time already let's drink let's bring it back to the uh, stage there and you guys enjoy thanks Wayne uh, so subject today is really uh, how can machine learning help you uh, designing as a designer improve your products and uh, as we mentioned Alex will also show you how easy it is to really to actually do it uh, so most of the uh, you know designer we talk to, they all heard about machine learning, artificial intelligence. They want to try, they, but they have not really a good understanding of how this can help them. So Ryan, can you expand on how this can you know help you know companies even saving money in some cases? Right, right. So from an ROI standpoint, um, what we're seeing is really four items, um, uh, significant items. Uh, first off is uh, saving of maintenance costs um, uh, with machines, uh, leveraging the machine learning side, uh, reduction of downtime, uh, also uh, in increasing uh, the equipment lifespan, and then finally, uh, we're also seeing uh, a, a, a stronger um, building of customer relationships. Okay, thanks. So, maintenance costs and reduction, you know, right, downtime. This is what everybody is looking and I think it's under the predictive maintenance umbrella that uh, that people are, uh, are usually looking for. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit more on the on the details here? 
Sure, absolutely. So from a saving of maintenance cost perspective, so what we're talk talking about is predicting the issue um, and resolving it in advance uh, before it's a significant problem. Um, next is really reduction of human interaction. Um, uh, and then the reduction of downtime, um, just really um, we're talking about more efficient resolutions, understanding what the issue is ahead of time so that downtime, if there is any, uh, we reduce it. Um, also, the, from uh, the example with uh, increased lifespan, equipment lifespan. So because uh, organizations have a better understanding of the equipment uh, and what's happening with it, how it's running, uh, what issues it's uh, potentially running into, um, uh, they're able to basically manage uh, and extend the lifespan of that, uh, of that device. And then finally, what we're seeing is um, an improved um, uh, relationship with the customer um, uh, because the organizations are offering a more stable, better functioning product. Um, uh, obviously, that leads to happier customers, but then also um, organizations are able to uh, really truly understand how customers are using the products and uh, have more of an ongoing relationship with those customers versus making the sale of a product and only getting called when there's a problem. Yeah, I think the, uh, the customer satisfaction is something that most of people forget you know, about where, that, where machine learning can really help them as well, developing better products and having a, a more stable customer base. So, but the, the thing is, why now? Why is it good to do it now? Why are we ready to, you know, to do it now? Sure, sure, great question. Um, Really, there's a few things. So um, first off, uh, convergence of um, the technology uh, with billions of deployed products um, uh, that, are, that have MCUs built in. Um, next, uh, what we're seeing is an advancement of sensors. Uh, not only are sensors themselves advancing, uh, but they're being included in products. Um, and uh, we have an ability to leverage that data. Um, and then finally, and it, it, it get back, gets back to my earlier point, um, customers have uh, greater expectations now. Um, they're expect product um, uh, that can, if there's any issues, can be resolved quickly. And so really there, there's a few things. The technology uh, is, is in place now to support um, predictive maintenance, machine learning, but then also uh, the expectations from the customers um, are higher uh, and, and they expect these types of solutions. Okay, makes perfect sense. So it seems that the timing is, is, is right now to do it. And we always heard about, you know, uh, machine learning at the edge, tiny ML. Uh, this is a game changer, isn't it? Right, exactly. And, and we're seeing um, several reasons why that's the case. Uh, and actually, I've got, uh, I've got five uh, that I, I like to go over with folks. Um, if you've got any comments while I'm going through these, let me know. But first and foremost, um, data security. So um, what we're seeing from a uh, machine learning standpoint, specifically machine learning at the edge, uh, because data is not being uh, sent out, um, either via wired or wirelessly going up to a cloud, um, uh, we've got less of a uh, security issue. Uh, now, of course, there is some amount of data that's uh, oftentimes with our customers uh, they still do uh, need to get out to a cloud database, but it's a much less significant amount. Uh, and then there are a couple of customers that don't communicate externally at all. Um, so that's the first one, data security. Uh, second is uh, um, power consumption. So uh, really, especially if you're talking about a wireless solution, um, we're able to process data at the edge with the, the uh, low power MCUs at, at a small fraction uh, of what it takes to uh, do a transmit and receive uh, event. Um, next is uh, bandwidth restrictions. So oftentimes um, the uh, solutions are in areas where uh, uh, either the internet connection isn't great or uh, in other cases, uh, there are protocols that uh, were developed, wireless protocols that weren't intended for a constant stream of, uh, of data being sent. Um, and, and we can we can get around that by basically again processing at the edge. Um, next is latency. So um, as you can imagine, the process of sending data up to a central repository, 
processing it, sending instructions back um, is much uh, much slower than basically processing uh, uh, right at the edge and taking action immediately. And then finally, uh, which is of course uh, uh, very important to everybody, is cost. So um, we're looking at a cost savings uh, both from data transmission. So if you're talking about a cellular connection, we're able to eliminate or uh, at the very least reduce the amount of cellular data uh, that the sent, that sent uh, and received, um, <clears throat> as well as the data storage costs. So um, instead of sending all the data out to the cloud, uh, storing that data, um, we're sending a very small fraction, um, and so you save money on those storage costs as well. Yeah, I think for, for the cost reason, I think Microchip is also helping on the integration in one MCU to have the machine learning, the sensor, and everything. So this is also helping on cost. Uh, you talk about data security. Microchip is also a leader here if you need to send some data, but may, maybe not all the data, but we can also help here. Low power, obviously. This is a message from Microchip for the last 20 years. Uh, and for the bandwidth restriction that you mentioned, uh, for instance, we have solutions like LoRa who can help with you know, the low cost, low power, long distance, and uh, you know, wireless uh, transmission. So I think we have a question from the booth, Wayne. Yeah, actually, you know, before, um, before we move on, uh, we actually have a question in the chat that's kind of asking a little bit to clarify, mm -hmm. uh, and this is, this is probably great for, for Ryan to, to jump in, uh, uh, just to kind of clarify what we mean by machine learning at the edge and tiny machine learning. So, you know, we, 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 we mentioned those terms and we kind of talked about them a little bit, but, you know, let's, let's take some time and, and kind of expand on that. Right, absolutely, and I, uh, I, you'll have to forgive me, I use this terminology so often that I assume uh, everybody uh, uh, is familiar with it. But uh, at the edge, so what we're talking about is the end device, the machine itself. Um, uh, you can, we can think about a, uh, um, well, any type of uh, machine that, that, that has an MCU in it, um, as well as a health and fitness uh, device, um, you know, the edge of the overall solution itself um, versus at the other end of the spectrum, you're talking about the cloud. Um, Jan, I don't know if you can, if you sure. uh, yeah, can no, think uh, of any other edge device examples, but I think uh, almost everything out there can yeah, consider the edge. For us at Microchip, the definition of the edge is where you're gathering data and when you're trying to do something with this data. So it's exactly what we're doing forever, being in the embedded world, is we have a sensor connected to um, an MCU, and that's what we call the edge. That's the definition of the edge for microchip. I know for other companies that the edge could be different, but that's how we, uh, we talk about the edge. Uh, you mentioned, Wayne, I think you mentioned TinyML as well. Uh, yep. So TinyML is an effort from everybody for the last few years to bring machine learning to smaller machine. Uh, and again, the, the size of the machine could be different. Uh, and you will, you know, Alex will show you that uh, it's pretty small on the MCU32, uh, on the 32 bit for microchip. Uh, but TinyML is more a generic term to say, let's try to get machine learning in the smallest microcontrollers or smallest, smallest uh, machine. Right, it'll, it'll also make sense when we go through some of the examples. Um, you know, we can, uh, uh, it, Go, go, go in greater detail then. Yeah, I think maybe, you know, Alex, if you can. Yeah, that would be a good time. Um, if you could take a look at my screen, I have a, an example application to show you a little bit more about how this would actually work in deployment. So we have the ML evaluation kit here in this video, and it's being used to monitor the vibration of an exhaust fan. This could be a sort of predictive maintenance type application where you're monitoring the fan to detect some sort of abnormality before it becomes an actual failure. So it's as simple as mounting the device on your fan and uh, connecting that to power. Maybe it's battery power. And then you trigger a learning cycle. And this is when the ML algorithm actually learns the particular vibrational signature of this fan. And then after it's learned it, it's able to move into a detect phase where it can then detect abnormalities, such as uh, something interfering with the fan blades or maybe some sort of blockage in the line. And so later on, we'll have more detail on that demo. And this is done on a small, small 32-bit microcontroller. Exactly. You know, I think it's, in that case, it's AMD 21. 
uh, an M0 core, so pretty small. Okay, so when we talk to also designers or engineers, they, they're all excited, I think, about machine learning and artificial intelligence, but they are afraid of getting into it because they really don't know. So it, it, it seems to be kind of complicated and difficult to, to implement, uh, but I think with you know, what we Microchip did with Cartesian, it's getting pretty easy now. So Ryan, can you help us understand you know, what we did here together? Yeah, sure, absolutely. So um, first off, a classic approach, the classic machine learning approach um, involves a, a few steps that can take anywhere from months to years. And first and foremost, um, it involves data collection, cleaning and labeling the data. Um, that in and of itself, we've seen with some customers take well over a year. Um, also, uh, in what's necessary in, in that process is uh, working with IT security uh, and infrastructure. Because again, in the classic approach, we're talking about sending that data um, up to the cloud. And so obviously, um, IT needs to get involved. Uh, next, and, and we see this come about quite often, is uh, a full machine learning effort from a classic, stand, from a classic standpoint uh, requires data scientists uh, involved. And, uh, um, and then finally, just overall, we see an overall um, high investment cost um, in, uh, in doing a classic machine learning effort. Um, and those efforts can take anywhere from six, nine, 12, 18 months in general. And that's part of really uh, why Cartesium has introduced NanoEdge AI Studio um, to the market. Uh, what we're looking at doing is um, supporting uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence at the edge uh, in a much more efficient, um, effective manner. Um, really, we're talking from going from uh, years to uh, months, or in some instances even weeks, um, to uh, implement uh, AI or machine learning at the edge. So, and, and what does that mean? Um, what we are able to do uh, with with our tool is uh, train on the MCU directly. So there's really no uh, manual data collection uh, like you have in the classic approach and We'll be going over that in, in a demo uh, that Alex is going to be doing later. Also, there's no data scientist um, uh, yeah, that's necessary. We're talking about empowering embedded developers. Um, and uh, so we handle that side of it uh, with our tool. There's no predefined <coughs> data sets. Um, and then also, um, we're able to uh, deploy um, in a much smaller footprint. So. Um, we're talking uh, on average about 12 kilobytes or um, uh, in RAM uh, and oftentimes in classic uh, data science or machine learning efforts, uh, you needed much, much more memory and you needed to run on uh, much more powerful um, <coughs> processors. Uh, and, and so we're alleviating all of those requirements and uh, bringing uh, machine learning uh, uh, down to the embedded developers so they can implement it quickly and efficiently. Yeah, I think, Ryan, you, you broke up a little bit, but what you say is that basically the model is about, and, and Alex can confirm that, is about 12 kilobytes of flash and RAM, correct? Yeah, I think 12 to 30, the embedded library. So it's much smaller than the typical machine learning embedded application. And I think the, you know, the two main things that you mentioned as well, which are key uh, for embedded designers to understand is, we are going to collect the data directly from the application, from their sensors. So it's not a data set that you can get online or you know, in, a, in any repository because you want to recognize an apple from an orange. Here, we are really focusing on your application so you will be able to use your hardware and that's what uh, Alex will show. But also the learning at the edge. I think that's a very uh, unique uh, feature from, the, uh, from Captasium. And that's a key differentiator. So can you, you know, same thing, uh, we need you know, to explain that, I think, because it's a very key element for people to understand. Sure, sure. So really, uh, you know, it's important to understand. We re starting from the algebra. Um, every single um, machine learning and single signal processing algorithm, um, so uh, the machine learning can run inside of the microcontroller. Our tool. Uh, that Alex is going to go through, Nano Edge AI Studio, 
um, lets you put the machine learning algorithm directly on the MCU, and it'll train itself um, with without a without requiring a connection to the cloud. So um, the steps that are involved, it's 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 actually really simple. So first, um, the embedded developer defines the project constraints, um, defining and selecting the uh, MCU that they'll be using. Um, as well as the RAM that they want to allocate. Um, next, they define the problem. Um, next, they select the best library uh, that, that uh, Nano Edge um, uh, helps, uh, um, helps them from uh, about 500 million different possible combinations of libraries, uh, and so they select that. And then finally, testing the program uh, in the emulator, the uh, tools emulator, and then uh, compiling and downloading uh, the C library directly onto the MCU. And again, Alex is going to go through that. It's going to it's going to make a lot of sense when he uh, demonstrates it. Yeah, it's just five five easy steps. Yeah. Uh, before we move forward, I think we have another question from the booth. Yeah, we actually have a couple questions and some housekeeping uh, that the the team would like me to do. First, I'd like to ask a question from Jarrett. So, in regards to the fan demo. Uh, could it accept multiple inputs, for example, accelerometer for, for vibration, uh, hall sensor output for RPM fluctuations, a temp sensor, uh, and then send the control to the PWM fan? Absolutely. Um, with Cartesium, you have the option to use a multivariable sensor, and so you can have as many sensor inputs or as many axes as you would like. Um, for this particular demo, we just used the accelerometer data, so three axes, um, but you have the flexibility to use as many as you need for your application. And just you need to answer that as well, there's on, on that specific demo kit, there's a temp sensor on it mm -hmm. that we didn't use for the demo, but it's already there and you can use it as well. Perfect, perfect. Um, we actually have some questions from, a question from LinkedIn. Um, which protocol is more compatible with this device, MQTT or CoAP? And that's, that's kind of a, you know, throwing that one out there for you. <laughs> Uh, Not that's sure how to answer that one. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, 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 what we'll do is we'll get. Uh, yeah. uh, Sorry we'll, for that. We'll point. get people in our teams chat to uh, to, to answer, yeah. and I'll pull it back up later. Um, one of, one other thing, uh, just a quick housekeeping note. Um, we'd actually like to know how you heard about this live stream. So if you don't mind, um, if you're uh, if you can drop us a note in just in the comments and let us know where you heard you know where you heard this thing was going on how you heard about it, um, if you're a normal, irregular viewer, um, that would help us out. And uh, I'll let you guys go ahead and continue. Okay, thanks Wayne. So, you know, we discussed more uh, theory and ideas here, but uh, Ryan, I think it would be interesting for the viewers to have some real world uh, examples. Right, absolutely. So, um, a few that I'll just kind of run through. And again, you know, we work with really, um, many types of sensors, whether it's vibration, pressure, VOC, current, um, uh, magnetic, hall effect, um, temp, and sound. Um, we're really pulling data from, from those sensors and, and uh, helping the, uh, uh, the device learn um, and then detect anomalies. But the first one that I'd like to um, uh, talk about is we, we've got a solution uh, where we're monitoring, our customers monitoring pumps for buildup and blockage. So uh, they're using an accelerometer um, on the device to listen uh, for pump vibrations uh, and then actually sending an alert um, when there's an anomaly um, uh, such that they're, uh, they're feeling that there's a problem um, that's occurring. So that's the first one that's for uh, um, monitoring uh, um, blockage. Uh, another one um, is leak detection. So we're using uh, microphones to listen for micro leaks, um, very small leaks, and uh, um, uh, notify uh, through predictive maintenance uh, notifications uh, to preempt the shutdown. Um, next example is uh, electrical motor monitoring, and we're using, in that case, um, magnetic or hall sensor to monitor an electric motor to predict the uh, wear, wear and tear um, and detect anomalies. That's a pretty common um, uh, implementation for our customers. And then also, uh, we've got an example with a uh, um, solution out in the field where it's uh, air conditioned uh, unit monitoring where they're using both a hall effect as well as um, a vibration sensor to understand um, 
the status of the uh, uh, filter um, on the air conditioner and then so send a notification as to uh, uh, when that filter needs to be changed versus, um, you know, as we all uh, probably currently do, we, we change the filter at, at, at the intervals that are recommended, um, but that, that doesn't necessarily uh, equate with whether the filter is dirty or not. So those are just a, a few examples. So you're telling me that I don't have to change my oil change every 3,000 miles, I could do more? Maybe in some cases, that could yeah. save me money. Yeah, in fact, it, yeah, speaking of oil change, we're working with a customer right now um, that has large industrial um, uh, machines. And uh, from what they told us, the uh, uh, machine makes uh, around about $60,000 an hour to operate. So shutting that machine down and doing an oil change when it's not necessary or yep. not doing the oil change when it is necessary uh, has a very significant cost associated with it. So we're monitoring uh, the oil specifically and uh, um, uh, sending an alert as to uh, when when it should be changed or any other issues. Now you can see, uh, you say you know, $60,000 an hour, you said, for that machine. So you know, shutting it down one hour it could, you know, could go very fast. So I can see that. Uh, so. Now, before we, we, we move to the demo is, you know, we work together with Cartesian and, you know, Microchip uh, to bring a, a, you know, different solution to the market. Uh, I'd like you to go through that very quickly, uh, Ryan. Right, right, thanks, Jan. So uh, just a couple things to note. So, um, you know, as you mentioned, we're a uh, Microchip partner. Um, we're actually working on multiple um, customer projects together. Uh, as we speak, but uh, one of the one of the great things is we're so the Nano Edge AI Studio, the tool, um, the Cartesian tool that embedded developers use, is in, integrated. Uh, we've worked with Microchip to integrate that directly into MP Lab. So, um, it, embedded engineer that's comfortable with MP Lab uh, can very easily access and integrate uh, Cartesian uh, uh, into a solution. And then also, and I think this is what uh, you know, uh, Wayne had highlighted it earlier, um, and uh, uh, Alex is going to go go over it. Um, there's an eval kit, the uh, SAMD21, um, that uh, works out of the box with uh, Cartesium Nano Edge AI Studio. And in addition um, to just the kit itself, we have a full tutorial. Um, so if someone wants to put together a proof of concept, a demo themselves. Um, either doing the fan monitoring and the vibration or any other type of um, sensor collection, um, they can start off with that kit. Yeah, yeah. What I see also, you know, talking to you know, customers is with vibration, you got a lot of information. So that's one of the key sensors that you see in, the, in machine learning for, for, for a reason. Uh, and yes, I think the, the goal here is really to bring machine learning for embedded to embedded designers. This is, you know, Microchip is the embedded company, and we want to bring machine learning to the embedded designer, but sounds too good to be true now. <laughs> so, Alex, can you, can you show, work, show us how it, uh, how it actually works? Sure, I'd be glad to give a demo. Um, first, I want to give a few more details about our kit that we're using today. So, the ML evaluation kit is a combination of the accelerometer gyroscope sensor board with the SAMD21 sensor board. So we have a Bosch TDK, uh, sorry, a Bosch sensor as well as a TDK sensor. And the sensor boards are made by Microelectronica and they can be easily attached to our microchip boards just using the Microbus header. Um, so this makes it easy for you to get a variety of different sensors for your application um, and you can also use them with a variety of different microchip products. Um, so for this demo setup, we have the um, accelerometer data streaming over UART to the PC and I'm viewing this data within MP Lab. So we have a tool called MP Lab Data Visualizer where you can view your serial data live. I think um, it's a brand new version of it, correct? Yeah, it just released later, or earlier this year. And so you can install MP Lab Data Visualizer um, with the plugins manager within MP Lab X, and you can find it in the available plugins section. Um, we also are going to be using the machine learning plugin, which you can see here in the, the bottom center of the screen. Um, and that enables us to take data that we collect in MP Lab Data Visualizer, and then we can connect it to one of the partner platforms. Um, so today we're going to be using Cartesium. So I'll just select Cartesium within the ML plugin, 
And uh, once I've selected a region of data that I would like to use for my machine learning application, I can just click Mark Time Window, and that sets the cursors uh, around the viewable data in the window. And then I'm able to save that data to a CSV file that's already formatted for import into Cartesian's Nano Edge AI Studio. Um, so the only parameter that you'd really want to change in this step here is the row sample count. This is essentially your buffer size, and for Cartesium, they recommend you use a buffer size that's a power of two. Um, so for this application, I'm using 256 as the buffer size. Um, and you just are able to save this file, uh, give it a random name, and we're good to go. So that's sort of the MP Lab half of it. And now that I have my data collected, I can move on to Cartesium's Nano Edge AI Studio to do my machine learning application. Um, so I already have some data loaded in here, um, but I'll show you really quick how you import your CSV files um, from MP Lab. You're just able to select a file um, when you're importing from file. And if I select a CSV here, and then um, make sure you get the delimiter correct. Um, as long as you have a green check mark here, you know that everything's been parsed correctly. Um, and then validate the import. And the software will run a few more checks on your data to make sure there's no outliers or random data, duplicates. And then you get a nice graph to visualize your data here. Um, now I'll tell you a little bit more about what makes the Cartesian solution unique. Um, so this is anomaly detection. And uh, with anomaly detection, you have normal and abnormal data. So the idea is that the machine learning algorithm can learn the normal state of the system and then it can flag the application when anything abnormal is detected. Um, so in the Nano Edge AI Studio, I have a regular signal section as well as an abnormal signal section. So we upload examples of each for the tool so that it can then uh, create an ML model that's well suited for this particular data. And so once we have both of our signal files loaded, we can move on to the optimize and benchmark step. And this is where the real magic happens within Cartesian's uh, tool you're able to just kick off this step, and then it's going to cycle through millions of different possible ML models to find the best one for your particular data. So I've already run this process on this data here, and so this is the, re the result that we get. So um, Alex, how do, how do we choose the right one? You, I think there's some parameters that you can set, correct? Um, most of them are not um, exposed to the user. The main one is the max RAM usage. Yep. So you can put a limit on how much RAM you have available in your application, and then it's going to make sure you stay under that limit, but it will also try to minimize it as much as possible. Um, so, so I think you just set up what, which core you want to use and how much RAM you, you allow. Exactly, yeah, M0 or M4, whatever core you're using, and then that's going to op optimize the uh, calculations for that particular core, and then when you set the, the RAM, then we're going to keep it under that limit. Um, the other two things that it's trying to optimize are the accuracy and the confidence. So the balanced accuracy has to do with how many of your sample data were accurately um, classified. So this is either as regular or anomaly. Um, it's a binary classification problem with two possible options. And the confidence has to do with the spread of your data. So um, once it's passed through the model, how well spread is the data? If it has a, a really good spread, in this case, it's 100% because all of our nominal data is um, getting 100% similarity score. And then all of our abnormal data is getting 0%. So it has the maximum spread and therefore the maximum confidence that it's going to be able to accurately uh, predict each data sample. Um, so once this whole process has been done, what you have is a untrained model that can be deployed in your embedded application. And then this is maybe one of the most special things about Cartesian's application is it's actually going to train that model and learn at the edge. Um, and what that means is you can have a generalized model maybe for all different types of exhaust fans, and you can deploy those on unique fans that are larger, smaller, different types of systems, and then it will learn that specific fan. Um, and you don't have to create a unique model for every single one. And so once you've created this, uh, untrained model and you want to test it, uh, with the free trial version of Nano Edge AI Studio, you can use the emulator and install an emulator on your PC to simulate what it would be like in deployment. And this allows you to load in new test data to verify the performance of your model um, and show it some anomalies and see if it can detect them accurately. Um, so once you're satisfied with the performance in this emulator step, um, with the pro version, you can move on to deploying this to your embedded application. And so this is as simple as uh, pressing compile and then choose a development version. 
and this will download a zip file that contains the two source files that you need to add to your embedded application. So I've already downloaded those, and I can show you um, within MP Lab how this will look in your project. But basically, all you'll have is a um, any AI library. This is the precompiled library that uh, Cartesium has put the uh, ML model in, and then you have a header file, which is your um, API for accessing the library. And the two important functions are the learn function and detect. So how this would look like from the high level in your application is you would initialize your sensor as well as your um, Nano Edge AI library, and then you go through a learning phase, and this is where the library actually learns the particular system that it was uh, installed to monitor. And once the learning phase is complete, then you can periodically call the detect function to scan for abnormalities. Um, another great benefit of the Cartesian solution is that it can learn and adapt over time. So this model can improve over time. Um, you can periodically call the learn function again um, to learn the system maybe as it ages and wears and things change a little bit. Um, so the user has, or sorry, the embedded developer has the complete control over when to learn and when to detect. So it allows a lot of flexibility in deployment. Yeah, we saw that, for example, for customer where you know, when the temperature was below a certain point, they start to relearn because they say the bearing is going to behave differently and things like that. So they say, we, we, we may see an abnormality where it's not re a real one, and we know it's because of the temperature, not because of the wearing out. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's interesting because here I didn't see anything about neural network and machine learning or anything. So yeah. uh, it's, I think this is really designed for embedded designer where you, you, you get your data, you get your signal from your application, you upload there and you, you so give it to Cartesium to find the right model and the best solution for your application. You don't have to go deep into the details and the geeky side of machine learning. And I think that's a, that's a key element that we want to bring to the embedded designers here. Yeah, that's and I and I think ahead, I think Jan that actually to the point earlier the question on MQTT, you're really we're, we're independent and um, of protocol from an IoT standpoint that you want to use. We're running on the MCU, and yeah. so okay. uh, the the engineer has the ability to use the protocol um, communication protocol that they want. Okay, thanks, Ryan. Uh, mm -hmm. So what you show. You know, people may not remember everything you showed, but I yeah. think we have documentation to help you know people getting started. Yes, exactly. We have a great article written by one of our ML Apps engineers, Thomas Garcia. Um, you can find it on microchipdeveloper.com. I think there should also be a link in the description below. But basically, it's outlining this demo application, fan anomaly detection with Cartesium, and it shows you everything you need to get started. Has some example firmware that you can use uh, to stream data from the ML evaluation kit, and um, yeah. I think that's about it. Should have everything you need to get going. Thanks. So this is what we wanted to show you today. Uh, Wayne, do we have any questions? Sure, we can uh, ask a couple of questions. Um, got this from let's see, Dr. K. Zilla. Uh, just asked, and he asked a great question, and uh, our one of our uh, colleagues, Sridhar, actually answered him in the chat. But okay. uh, we're on three different platforms, so I want to make sure everybody gets the benefit mm -hmm. of the answer. <laughs> Uh, the question was, is, does the algorithm update itself in real time, or is it static when you deploy it? It definitely updates in real time. So that's one of the differentiators of the Cartesium solution. Um, many tiny ML solutions out there would deploy a pre-trained model to your application, and that's going to be static over time. But uh, with Cartesium, you have the option to train it on the edge, so it can learn um, when it's needed, and then it can just stay in a static detection mode when that's needed as well. Yeah, and we, we, we see some application where uh, it can learn for a few minutes or maybe a week. Uh, let's say you want to do a leak detection from a, a household and you want to learn you know, everything going on from taking a shower to the dishwasher and everything. And maybe you say, I need a few days of samples to really understand everything. But that's up to you. So you have the choice to, uh, I think you show that in the, uh, in, in the main.c, you just call the, uh, the, the training mm -hmm. and then you update the model. Uh, as you wish. Awesome. And uh, this kind of uh, ties in with uh, a question from uh, Elvis over in the, the LinkedIn chat uh, asking, uh, his question is, can this device learn the presence of abnormal patterns? And of course the answer is yes, but the other very cool thing about it is basically, you know, the, the, as, as Alex has shown, we, we're, we're basically, uh, he's basically um, 
putting the algorithm onto the SAMD21 uh, uh, MCU. It can be used with other, uh, with other products in Microchip's portfolio as well, so that's a very cool thing. Um, let's see. I don't think we have any other questions right now. Um, but what, what I would like to do is remind people to take the survey uh, so that you can, once again, get the possibility of receiving one of these little babies. Um, if you want to get in touch with Ryan at Cartesium, I'm going to give you his phone number. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Send an email to livestream at microchip.com and uh, we'll make the connection. Uh, we'll make a connection with you guys. Um, and also, I just wanted to remind you, Jan, uh, you know, that, that this is actually the, the you know, the, the first of a, a series of two live streams. Correct. Um, so, so yes, we have, a, we, we have another a machine learning uh, live stream next month on uh, November 11 uh, with a different partner you saw maybe on the, uh, on the plugin that uh, Alex was showing that we're also working with Edge Impulse. So we will have, a, 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 you know, uh, another station with Edge Impulse covering a completely different, you know, story here. And uh, we will have a cool demo that uh, Alex is working on here. So stay tuned on that one. But uh, here, you know, for, for Cartesian is really anomaly detection, small models, learning at the edge. I think these are the, the, the key points here. It was really developed uh, for embedded designers in mind. Uh, Ryan, do you, do you have any few, few things you want to, to add? No, that, that, that's, that's great, Jan. Yeah, so we're looking at um, helping our customers, uh, we really embedded engineers, to deploy machine learning, artificial intelligence at the edge in a quickly, uh, most efficient uh, manner. Okay. So, yeah, I hope that the, the viewers are excited as we are because we think that this is a great tool for engineers. Yeah. Uh, and it's easy, as, as you can see, it's pretty easy to use. You don't need to have a PhD on machine learning to use it. And I actually have a couple of last minute questions. Sure, go ahead, close. please. Uh, first one is, uh, which tools uh, could we use to analyze the memory footprint impact and performance? Do we have a suite to do that? I think there are tools within MP Lab X. I'm yep. not sure um, exactly which ones, um, but you can analyze, you know, the memory footprint of your application just in the project manager yeah. view. Yeah, MP Lab X does allow you, does allow you to do that. Yeah. And uh, you know, there was also that very very cool, uh, you know, display that you that you brought up, with, which basically shows kind of the uh, the the you know algorithm being optimized for the memory footprint of the, of the device as well. So right. those Correct. are a couple of areas where we can handle it. Um, and one last question uh, from our pal Jared. Um, question for Ryan: Is there a licensing option for open open source projects? <laughs> I'd have to. Uh, That's a really contact what we you. offer right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why don't, why don't you reach out? Uh, we'll have a discussion as to what you're looking at. But uh, there is a free trial of the software. Um, everything that. Uh, Alex showed uh, you have full capabilities uh, in using that emulator. Um, and once you're comfortable with the tool, um, using that free trial, we'll definitely, uh, we can definitely have a conversation and, and talk about what you're trying to accomplish and what makes sense. Okay, perfect, perfect. And uh, Jared's actually not too far from you. I believe he's uh, in, in Illinois. So, uh, Great. yeah, so, so, you know, that's the point. If you, you know, the, 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 the folks over at Cartesium, uh, are willing to work with you guys, willing to help. So, um, you know, if you, you use that 30-day trial um, and you know, get in contact with them to discuss uh, to discuss pricing, pricing and li licensing options. And I think that's pretty much all I have, uh, other than the fact that we're, we're going to contact you via email um, if you're going to receive a free sample. And in the next live stream. Uh, I will also, we will, if I'm here, we will also announce the, uh, the names of the people who have received the uh, SAMD21 machine learning evaluation kits. So thanks, Wayne. So yes, yeah, so thanks for watching us today. I hope, you know, you found it uh, useful and stay tuned for the, if you, you know, into the machine learning uh, subject, stay tuned for the next uh, live stream on the uh, November 11th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.